Hey there, and welcome to the Strong and Mighty Podcast. I am your host, the Power Lady, Larnie Mulvey. Join me and my guests where we share our thoughts, experiences, and journeys to find inner strength that allowed us to become the most powerful version of ourselves. This podcast is a place to feel empowered, inspired, and encouraged to know you are stronger than you think you are. For all news updates, follow me on Instagram at Larnie Mulvey or at Strong and Mighty Company or on Facebook at Strong and Mighty Company. All right, guys. Hey, this is Chad from the podcast Seize Good Degrees. We are blasting, and I'm going to say blasting, all the brand new episodes here on the Strong and Mighty podcast. Yeah. I should be the host, but it's Larnie's podcast. So we're going to leave it with Larnie and just say, like, <laughs> she's going to tell us all this stuff. All right, guys. So we are loading it up. I'm going to shut up and let her, you know, be the leader. So yeah. for all you guys, if you don't know what it is, download these episodes. Stay tuned. And also, she's got some other stuff coming down the pipeline, like a book. So yeah. go visit strongmoney.com and we'll rock this. All right. So welcome to our collaborative podcast. Uh, I guess I, I, you know, thing that we're doing. So again, yes, I have today on the Strong and Mighty podcast, I have the awesome podcast host of C's Get Degrees. And he is jumping onto my podcast, Strong and Mighty. Um, so yes, there are so many things going on between um, both of our podcasts and, and things outside of the podcast, but holy cow, what, what, an, what a ride. Um, let me just talk about like how, how Chad and I met. Chad and I actually met on his podcast through another group. And ever since then, we have just collaborated on a whole bunch of things. And now we are, he is helping me getting my podcast feet wet. So he is going to be um, my guest here today. All right. So Chad, like you and I have talked off, offline, off camera, whatever. Um, so today we are going to dive into who you are and let the listeners connect with you and your story because I think our journeys and stories are so amazing that it, we, you know, we need to share it. We need to make sure that people are not um, alone in any of their journeys and they can relate that they're not. So <clears throat> um, I'm going to send it off to you here, let you introduce yourself a little bit more and um, like tell us about yourself. First of all, where are you from? We are live Sunday morning in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And usually Larnie's warmer than me, but I'm going to kind of do a one up because, you know, it's I'm the guest today, so I could do that. <laughs> it is probably about 40 degrees out and it was super foggy this morning. So I don't know what your weather is, but hey, spring's coming. We're enjoying it. A little, little gray, but guys, that's a Midwest thing. Um, <laughs> but no, it's been good. Uh, I'm old enough to understand that in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some crazy stuff coming with the weather. So we're enjoying it while we can. That's and right. yes, we did have almost an 80 degree swing in the last two weeks. Oh, I, you got to love our Midwest weather. You know, you got to love it. I am. Yes. Let's just build this thing up to where I can enjoy sunshine and snowy mountains when we get older. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and dryness. So oh my no, uh, well, we'll just start with this. So guys, many people on this journey, and I'm going to say journey. Path, journey, road. Fast lane, <laughs> coffee shows. Oh yeah, hint. hey, if you don't, we got to drop this. I'm off key. <laughs> she was being nicely and not selfish of saying this, selfless. <laughs> if you guys don't visit YouTube, go visit Let's Talk Java on YouTube. Cause you're going to see this craziness. This one's going to be serious. This podcast will be a little bit more serious <laughs> side of chat. So if you want all the giggling and goofing and messing around and coffee and fun stuff and Chad kind of cussing, swearing half the time, go visit let's talk Java doc or uh, oh, let, let's talk Java on YouTube or see our post today. All right. Drops done. <laughs> yes. Back, back to you. Back all to right. you. Let's, let's got all let's, the stuff done. Yeah. Let's all focus. Right. Let's focus. 
Okay. I just started my coffee, guys. I know. So did I. Hello Kitty is is getting empty here. So we got my Goodwill special Aladdin that's been through many, many tractors, many, many <laughs> miles. This one's gonna go in a frame when I get done because I'm just gonna say we traveled it all. <laughs> and just retire it. So um no, no, no. So like getting back to the journey here. So guys both of us can contest. We're actually prime examples of this. So when many people walk up and say, Hey dude, start a podcast or start this thing or start collaborating with people. What happens is your life just completely goes nicely in a fast lane and you, you just don't even control it. Cause it just, it goes down these rabbit holes that are very, very, very fruitful for knowledge wise, money wise, talking wise, whatever it is, all the projects that are in that, that, rabbit hole are just phenomenal but the thing about it is as you're a host you see so many stories as a host and what happens is like the listeners and stuff they're like hey your stories are awesome your shows are awesome you know keep going down this route you know you're evolving all that fun stuff but what happens is they're like we see them but we don't see you like we, we know you as the host, we know you as the local, you know, like six months, eight's worth, you know, worth the speaking, what, whatever that came on our pipeline. And, um, but we want to see you, we want to see where you came from and build it up and why, you know, your heart's kind of where it's at. So, um, I will be a hundred percent honest guys. Uh, it takes me a lot to love, but that's just because of the journey and I'm working on that. So, um, we all are, we all yeah. are working on that. So as, as much as it, I seem like I'm not paying attention, I'm actually am paying attention. Um, but it takes a little more to rattle me versus uh, like a normal person where they start crying right away. So it's, we'll, we'll see what it is, but yeah, the, no, that we're all imperfect guys. So, um, but yeah, no. Bring it Podcast together. host done. <laughs> Podcast <laughs> guest is back. Hello, Larney. How are you doing? <laughs> Okay. So I know that when you interviewed me, it was like, how did you get to where you're at now? Yeah. And so I'm going to throw that question back to you. Like what made you, what was like one of your pivotal points to get you to where you're now podcasting and sharing other people's stories of inspiration and um, encouragement? Oof. Well, here's a little secret, guys. I was supposed to create a podcast and put all my comedy dumb stuff I did back when I was drinking all the time and record them. And that was the initial thing. So both of us have multiple friends at, at the Venture Project that we're, that I'm currently around. She's going to visit. Plug. Um, Aaron. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> a, th th there's initials. D S and A J. So you guys, hello. Yes, we plugged you. Um, so I walked up to him and AJ comes walking up. He's like, dude, we gotta get you behind behind the microphone. I'm like, yeah, right. Well, in the process, Dan come walking up, and uh Dan's very good friends with him. Dan does a lot of his behind the scenes stuff for the businesses and stuff. And he's like, No, dude, he goes, I want I run one, actually two. Um AJ obviously has had one and I think still has it. Um, it's about four years old and worldwide. And um, he goes, dude, we got to get you behind the mic. We got to get you laughing, whatever. Well, so I jumped on Dan's for the first two episodes. So it was like my episode a couple weeks back, come back, do the series. For the so it was the goofy first, then serious one second or vice versa. I don't remember. And all of a sudden he's like, people are reaching out, dude, start your own. I'm like, yeah, right. You're out of your, you know, we're going to swear here. We're, you're out of your damn mind. <laughs> I got no damn time for this. <laughs> um, and uh, going through the process, Dan's like, no, dude, I'm st you're starting your own. I'm walking you through it. So I ended up, you know, just like everything, you, you plant that seed and goes goes in. Um, the initial seeds get degrees was supposed to come out with trying to capture my goofiness. Mm -hmm. Um, and some of you guys that know me well, know my, I'm kind of out there at times. Um, it's a fun personality, but it's, we like to hide a lot. So the people that are happy a lot, yeah. they are happy, but yeah. they do over happy to hide the layers. Okay. So it's, that's where I'm in. 
Um, but no, yeah, what? So that was launched May 1st. So I am currently 41 episodes in. We have uh, another six, I think, pre-recorded. So what we're going to do is uh, year one's going to end at episode 50. So it's going to be about whenever it lines up in, in the calendar here, I'm guessing late April. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're going to reset and do episode two here with another one, two, three, four, five on it. So we are currently recorded. I'm thinking about 50, 60 episodes, give or take. And then uh, guest episodes, dozen plus um youtube shows dozens mm-hmm. plus i don't know it's it's like i like we keep reiterating here that once you get on this journey it just you wake up and someone's like hey jump on this all right cool like yeah. we don't even need a checklist anymore of what happens because it just happens <laughs> it just happens it just happens so like you're just talking about like the layers that you have <clears throat> um and you know like peel back a layer for us like peel back a layer, let us know who Chad is. You know, uh, let's, let's let's get to the let's get through the foam first, and then we can get through to the latte, as Johnny says. We like get to the, the, the latte, get down. Uh, you know, so let's get through the foam. All right, guys. Uh, See how I put the less talk Java thing in there? Okay, I know. <laughs> I love the plug, Doctor J. If any of you guys don't. We will get serious here, but guys, if you don't know how to make coffee on all the coffee makers, plug again, <laughs> plug, plug. I mean, we're going to re- keep repeating this. Go visit the episode eight of Let's Talk Java and Dr. J, which is Johnny, one sexy dude. He's got like a hilarious, sexy beard, walks you guys through all the correct coffee procedures. And yes, he does own a coffee store, so he knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Layers, Chad. Yes. Layers um so obviously i am not a finished product just like everyone um we are gradually growing into where we're at uh i was a complete son of a bitch hopefully i can swear on this uh i'll put the explicit i'll put the big you know the big i got you covered chad (laughs) (laughs) um so this i'm gonna be 35 and whenever so march 11th so this drop in probably march 1st march 5th somewhere in there so a week or two from now, um, I finally accepted who I am about a year and a half ago, year and a quarter, somewhere in there. So um, if all you guys are fighting in your 20s to trying to find yourselves, just just my tip for you, throw shit against the wall and see what sticks and have fun with it. Um, because just like Larney, 20s are for making a mess. Mm-hmm. and uh you know planting some seeds in a pg way of saying it um mm-hmm. and making all the alcohol whatever it is that it's kind of like a party stage but a lot of us once you hit 30 you finally start to grow into it so um but no uh the bulk of my story was actually multiple addictions um mm. multiple i well let's word it this way. So my real father has not been part of my life since I was 18. Uh, and the last time I spoke words with him was a written note telling him that he was a fucking worthless father. And I was 20 at the time. Um, my mom actually said, did you send that out? I said, yes, I did. And she goes, did you think about it? I'm like, nope, it was needed to be done. So, uh, I haven't spoke to him in 14 years. Um, the last words out of his mouth, what to my sister actually was, she was kind of on the same time frame. Um, so I think he said, Hey, you graduated college now at graduation and say, now you can pay me back. And that was at the graduation ceremony. So, uh, yeah, both of us haven't seen him in 14 years. Um, so like, we're going to layer in a couple sections here, but like, obviously, yes, I battle multiple addictions. Um, obviously, yes, I had a father that mm-hmm. left my life. I did get raised up by a stepfather who's phenomenal, but with phenomenal, there's some layers and damage and stuff that occurred on that. So not to throw anyone under the bus here, guys, just like everyone, you know, your journey is your journey. You have phenomenal parents. Um, 
but the journey evolved with a lot of darkness on his side of it too. And still currently. So a lot of my addictions not was taught by him Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, at the time I thought it was, but now it's more of, okay, now it's hereditary and you're starting to realize what's coming Mm -hmm. came in the past. Um, So I, I, I accepted what it was, but like starting. So pretty much my stepdad came in when I was three. So I'm 34. Um, So my true dad, blood dad is non-existent. Um, But my sister and I pretty much, we call him Papa Rick, but like, that's what my niece and nephew call him. But like Papa Rick was pretty much our non-blood father that raised us. So um, yes, both my parents divorced, both of them are remarried now. Uh, I haven't seen my stepmom in ages. I really don't care to see her. Um, We'll just leave it at that. And I honestly, guys, my real father, if you look at 20 years, I would say now, actually. So in 34 years of my life, for about 31 years, he's lived a mile away. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like you can jump on your bike and go see him. But of that, he barely did anything. So we'll just say it that way. So um we're going to start with the fathers we're going to go into the the addictions um and then going into the divorces and we'll see how much we can record on this yeah <laughs> ideally it's probably there, going to be a part a lot two. about you chad there is a lot about you that i mean i know i mean i don't know you like when you were little or anything like that but it's like i i know of you like i know there's so much like, you know, about me, there's just so much about me too. Like we can talk about our, you know, lives and our journeys for forever. We never, we never stay on time because it's just how we are, but yeah, there's so much about you and like, you know, you are right now, like trying to figure out, okay, what, which one should I talk about? <laughs> I'm just, you know what, to be honest, I'll probably just jump in the dads right away and then kind of layered it in. So like, obviously growing up guys, uh, we'll get kind of deeper here but um i do have an older sister she is four years older than me she does have the same birthday and yes i did steal the birthday uh <laughs> so we're not twins but we are born on the same day um just like family you you had some struggles and stuff and then you you know you find each other again and, and go from there so we have a very good healthy relationship um she has two beautiful children that are mint carbon copies of me and her <laughs> and uh so every now and then I get a little text like I did yesterday saying, Hey, this little son of a bitch is you. So, um, but no, it's, we're going to see her in a few weeks. She'd love her to death. She's a phenomenal girl, way, way stronger than me. Um, she's a damn warrior. So we'll save that one for a different day. And yes, all you guys are going to hear about that story down the road. So we'll just leave it at that. But growing up, um, so like, my mom, I don't remember much of this, but my sister does, but like my mom obviously got, you know, they went in the mill right away and they got married. So like she had my sister at 22, she had me at 26, but like my dad only wanted one. Mm-hmm. So like she went through and she's like, no, I want three. So obviously you compromise and stuff, but she ended up losing one in between. And then they tried for like, or not say they tried, she tried for i guess in six months eight months mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and boom you know i came around but from day one my dad never wanted me because i was hyperactive mm. so like my dad's a very actually very smart individual for not for the lack of education he would have been a great engineer or like great accountant or whatever but um, back in the day guys they would just jump right in the mills and stuff and and get to work so a lot of these parents that are 60 65 years old didn't go to school you know like you you want the ones that went to school that could afford it and then you want the ones like my parents where you know they just jump right in because they don't they couldn't afford it so right right um so throughout i think three four so pretty much my sister's she's grown into my mom now but at the time like she has a lot of classifications like my dad so like her and her and him blended. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know growing up is we never knew who his dad was. 
Really? And so when it came to like the divorce and stuff, like I was so young, but like he would say, Hey, I'm picking up my sister, but I don't want Chad leave him home oh. because he's too hyper. And then what would happen was if, you know, my mom forced it, which majority of the time she's like, you know, screw you guys. You're taking both kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would go there and my sister and I can contest this many, many years. So he would work every day. He would work 12. So like he would pick us up, go home, climb in bed. We would grab into all the Pepsi and stuff that he has, mm -hmm. get all wound up, gets, get pissed off. Cause I'm all wound up and drop us back home, off at our mother's and say, Oh, by the way, here, your kid's out of control. Take them. Oh my God. So my memory, I mean, I'm, I'm healing from my father. I mean, there's some things, you know, like back in my twenties, I was always chasing that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm healed from it. I really don't care um, to be honest. Like I'm past the bullshit of him growing up. Um, but like <clears throat> we would go there and he was a guy that was still stuck in the seventies. So like a lot of John Belushi, a lot of animal house, Caddyshack, all that stuff. So eight, nine years old, you know, my sister's like, Hey, you know, we only have the blues brothers or whatever movie. So we would throw it in. So here I was seeing nudity already at like eight years old, mm -hmm. like on a constant thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like for me walking in school and all that stuff, saying Caddyshack lines saying, you know, what else was there? Animal house lines and stuff porkies though well, oh we can go we can yes we're that fun that movie is funny all right guys but there's some stuff that there's an eight-year-old should not see in that oh my god um so like i was going to middle school already or even grade school of seeing you know naked girls all the time like on a normal thing um so that addiction started probably when i was eight or nine years old um and at the time I didn't know I have an addictive personality. So, so you get thrown at that. You think that's your environment every day. So like me seeing naked girls was nothing. Um, but like in the process of it at that same time, my oh shit, that's five years in. So, yeah. So at that same time, my, my stepdad and my mom, you know, they had a rough patch at the beginning like first couple of years in whatever. So like he's battling his wife or his ex-wife with his two kids. My mom's getting pissed off all the time because she's yelling at my mom saying, don't raise my kids like that. So like from ages eight to 16 years old, mm -hmm. our stepdad would just come home, just slam shit against the wall uh, floor, slam doors, uh, so he, I mean, he's okay. We'll say it this way. He's a phenomenal, loving, caring individual. Like he's a phenomenal guy. Um, just has his demons, like big time yeah. demons. Um, so we're not throwing them under the bus guys. We're not throwing any of these guys under the bus. It is what it is. It already occurred. So, um, so like he would work at the mills, rotating shifts, all that stuff. So like he would come home, got pissed off with the boys at work, open the door and just completely slam it shut. Like just whip it shut, like stuff dropping, like pictures dropping on the wall in the house. Mm -hmm. And then two seconds later, he would go grab the whiskey bottle, make a mixer. And then, oh, I'm home finally. Huh? What the fuck are you guys doing home? You know, stuff like that. So like he didn't physically beat us, but it, it was a lot of loudness and a lot of yelling of verbal stuff. So like he didn't like shred you to the floor but it was one of those voices that like you hear something slam and both you know me and my sister wherever we were at uh would completely block and lock up so it'd be like almost like a, a ptsd type of thing so like the army guys they would hear boom and then they just freak out and just completely like lock up with the shell up many 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 years we have that that like he would walk right through the door and he still does it to this day but i'm used to it but you know, he was a ticking time bomb. So it's like short tempered, short, whatever, like phenomenal guy, but just short tempered. And, you know, within two, three minutes, four minutes, if, if someone didn't like something, you know, like he got pissed off that one day and took all of our clothes and throw them in the driveway. 
just because they weren't picked up or they were in the wrong spot. So like he was that guy that would take clothes that were at the top of the stairway. And I grew up in a tri-level house. So like six steps, one way, six steps, the other. And like that one day he did something to my sister and I or something, whatever it was like, he got pissed off that one day and just completely kicked the fucking clothes basket all the way down the stairs. And uh, many, many times, and I could contest to this, on my time, like the dog would do something and down the stairways, the dog goes, um, just very, he wasn't violent to us, but just short tempered, just, I don't know, rude. Just, I mean, right now we're, we're a little rougher, um, in our relationship. So like, for me, it's kind of not, I'm not quite, you know, that, in depth to throwing them under the bus, uh, not to in depth, but like I can do it a little bit more often now because I just, I'm my own individual. So like yeah. the shit's given is pretty much nothing much, but I still love him to death because he took us under our wing. But so like growing up, we always had that verbal clock at home. Mm. So like, instead of, you know, like the caring and loving, whatever, Hey dude, you know, like he taught us how to build stuff. He taught us how to fix stuff on cars. He taught us how to rotate tires, fish, hunt. So I'm like, both my sister and I can go through and say, hey, 98% of the stuff that we were taught, mm-hmm. we were taught by him. And a phenomenal guy. It's just, he had his demons. So like constantly from day one, we would always have whiskey in our house. And growing up in a high school, you know, starting 13 is when I big time started to drink. So like, we would always call him grandpa drinks, but growing up, here's another one. And Gramp, I love grandpa to death. He passed away, but growing up, we would always go out on Friday night mm. or go up to like his friends. So like we would, the nickname growing up was, Hey, go make a grandpa drink. Well, here would be, yeah, you know, like the 12, 14 ounce mixers. And here I'm eight, nine years old mixing grandpa drink, thinking it's fun and not knowing and the repercussions. And now you know, you, you, yeah. At eight years old, you you know how to make these drinks. I was buying bars when I was already two, three years old. Yeah. So like I would, they would always go out to eat and here I'm, you know, grabbing quarters and putting them in machines, running behind the bars, pulling quarters out of the bars, hitting, you know, soda things or whatever. So like I could operate a bar when I was not operate, operate, but like everything behind the scenes in a bar, mm-hmm. I knew how to operate when I was, you know, five, six years old. And so as you were growing up, this is like something that you've already learned. Yeah. It's something you've known. Oh, yeah. And it's like second nature. You're just like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna make things and stuff. Like what, oh, yeah. So 13. what like yeah, what ended up like throughout your 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 teenage years, like what was like the main thing where you're like, holy crap. Like, what am I gonna do with my life? Did you ever think that like that? Did you ever mm-hmm. Um, um, have like these addictions throughout your teenage years? Did they like tear you in a different directions? Like, what um, was- no, because I hit it well. Mm. So all you guys that have addiction, like people that don't understand addicts, if you're very good at it, you can operate daily. And there's going to be a pattern here, especially now after my divorce that I know now I need to stay away from it. I know now like the backdrops and the mental health and stuff. But when you're that age and you're young, you, you it's just a normal routine and you don't notice it. Yeah. So like 13, 14 years old, um, I think I had my first beer when I was like five. But like a consistent drinking, I think it was 12, 13 years old. So like deer hunting, we would go and I would, obviously you got to pull out the shots. So here I'm 12 years old, just smashing shots at the bar or at the hunting cabin. Um, yeah, 13. So I think it was middle school. I can remember high school. Um, like you go through Monday through Friday and then all of a sudden, you know, obviously boys on the weekend, you know, you go hang with your friend's house, whatever. But when we all had our license, our, our house was the one that you drank at because we were safe and secure. So like my, I didn't throw my buddy on the bus, whatever, but like he would go drop his girlfriend off. I would get a text saying, Hey dude, I'm on my way. So he would park on the road and all of a sudden my parents like, Oh, is so-and-so coming? Yep. You know, on the corner, there it goes. We got one waiting for him. Oh, wow. Wow. So 
to us, that's a normal culture. And she's, you know, Larnie's in the upper Midwest. So she gets the culture that's up here. Um, it gets worse further North you get, but <laughs> for us, once we hit the weekend, since the parents were drinking, you know, we would start drinking. Yeah. And the thing with me is I didn't mix ice in it. I was a crazy fucker that didn't do that. So here I'm taking 24 ounce Pepsi cups that you have at the bars, the old school blue ones. Half of that was whiskey. And the other half was, I think Pepsi at the time or Coke, whatever it was. So I'd be like, Hey, I'm cool. I'm going to be like grandpa and hang with my parents or whatever. So I would do probably. Oof, so what 12 ounces of that. So about 36 ounces, three for sure. Two to three on a normal night on at the camper. Um, some days almost four. So like if I wasn't driving anywhere, I would start drinking at noon. Oh, wow. And I'm 13, 14 years old. So do you think, um, like at 13, 14 years old, did you think that this was an addiction? Did you No, I didn't, I didn't know until a year ago. Wow. Wow. So I did with that whiskey love and I'm gonna say love. Um, so I did whiskey love until 20, 22 years old. Um, so when you, when you go into college, you're used to that routine and like in high school, running back up here in high school, but like I, when I started at 13, 14 years old, I started tournament fishing because a lot of my uh, stepdad's coworkers did tournament fishing. So like we were out at the bar tournaments, mm -hmm. you know, waking up at five in the morning doing tournament. And I, I still love this industry to the death. Um, I, I ended it last year, but so like here, I'm 13, 14 years old, hanging out with guys that are 30, 40, 50 years old. And obviously you got your bush lights, your bud lights, you know, your whiskeys and stuff. So like in and out of bars all the time, um, going by and grabbing rounds for guys, they didn't care. They'll serve. I mean, they know you're there. Your parents are there. It's the rule is up here in certain counties. You can, you know, get your own drinks. Yeah, so there, yeah. Um, so off and on, I was already drinking with the guys doing fishing tournaments already used to hanging with 30, 40 year old guys. And I'm what, 14, 15. So in high school I did sports, but my mind was on tournament fishing. Now, now I know why, but so I come 16 years old, I would sign up with my stepdad's friends, which are 50, 60, uh, at the time, 45 years old. Mm -hmm. So here I'm on the road at 16 years old, skipping school, hanging with the guys on a fishing tournament. And then, you know, cracking beers after while everyone else had a normal life, you know, like, except for my buddy, he worked all the time, but like, I would work, I would go do fishing tournaments and I would jump on debt right away. So like 16 years old, I already had a boat. Wow. So, so did like, that carry on did this, um, like behavior, your, this habit, did it like take you into college as well? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So like I would roll into, so tech school, you could still get away with that because the learning style is built up in tech school, like how I love it. So it's more hands-on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so like I could hide that. And obviously the porn was the same way. So like the porn went through high school, college, all that stuff. Um, the trouble didn't come until college with a lot of this stuff, but like kind of you can hide it because you don't know who you are quite yet. Right. So you, you can roll into high uh, tech school and be like, okay, hey, why am I not getting this? You know, why am I not sticking? And then all of a sudden the teacher's like, hey, dude, you know, take it this way, whatever. And you could still drink prior, come into class and the teacher wouldn't care because it's college. Like they're getting paid no matter what, even if you show up or not. So the accountability is there. And I had a phenomenal teacher then that actually called me out, but um, the accountability is more on you because you're paying for it. So they don't give a shit. So I transferred to <clears throat> 20 years old. I got a two year and transferred out to Western Wisconsin um, near the twin cities. There's a college out there for agriculture. So um, I'm actually one of those crazy guys that grew up in the city and had two farm degrees. <laughs> um, but all the way through growing up, I would always want to be on a farm. So like I would always get bullied in um, grade school, middle school, all that because I was farmer Chad, because I was the only one in the whole system that wanted to farm. So I, you know, girls, boys or whatever, be like farmer Chad, farmer Chad, farmer Chad, whatever. So like I went into high school, I was one of 
three in my class of 350 that had a truck. Mm. So I was in truck and boots and jeans or whatever in high school already trying to label that, you know, country boy. Right. And so I just, I, I flowed through all that stuff. So like 18 years old, I was thrown into, you know, classes with country boys and it kind of reversed because in the country, they don't like city people. Uh. Uh. So like here, I'm the oddball sitting in class getting ripped on because I'm the city boy learning about their industry and they hate it, like hate it with a passion. Like you, you know, I've heard lines many times, like you're just a fucking city boy. Just go sit over there. Yeah. And, um, it's like many, many years I would always get ripped on for that stuff and, you know, bring that attitude in tournament fishing because growing up, I was never accepted by fully accepted by both my parents. Well, my dads with an S to where we would, my acceptance would I would always chase trying to be, get that image or trying to be accepted is pretty much is what it was. Mm -hmm. So like deep down, I would hate not being part of the, the popular group. Yeah. 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 You no, know, I would hate not being part of, you know, having my parents weren't rich, so I have to earn this shit. So, yeah. um, just hate going through. So like I would hit in college in tournaments and here's, there's, you know, 20 year old kid, 22 year old kid that mommy and daddy pay for the the vehicle mommy and daddy pay for the boat so like they're out chasing their dreams and mommy and daddy took care of everything like that just annoyed the hell out of me like it like spiraled me out of control mm -hmm. half the time because here in college i was trying to chase you know like a lot of that thing with western wisconsin you pick up a lot of minnesota farmers mm -hmm. so they, they go to the outskirts like the platteville's the river falls the you know, Madison's the, those schools because U of M schools are double the price. So they jump the border and they go into Wisconsin school. So like here I'm sitting in a Wisconsin D three school, which is, you know, smaller size, but, um, you got all these farm boys that came in from Minnesota, which their parents are on like a third, fourth, fifth generation location. So that they're like debt free, if not half, like very financially stable. And I had a friend literally that his dad, and this was 2007, had 8,000 acres regular. Like to him, he was just working. So this kid was making already six grand a year at 18 years old. Wow. wow. And um, so I'm noticing this. So for me, being a smart little on the fly chicken, not say chicken, but like shit, I would go take a student loan submit it, max it out and forge my mom's signature and send it in. And I did that three times. So wow, Mr. Smith over here has a few zeros on his student loan debt. <laughs> so wow. with that, you're trying to out, obviously since you're fighting for acceptance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're going, and I didn't know this on the addiction side of it, but like I would have fun going on shopping sprees because that's a rush. Yes. Yes. So like I would go, you know, drop two grand at fleet farm, go drop two grand at Eddie Bauer. Oh, this is just free money, blah, 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 blah. So paid off with student loans. Hey, I'm paid off on my debt. All right, cool. Not, not really, but, um, so I bought seven guitars in my life in a matter of a year. And that probably was about two, three grand worth of stuff. Uh, I, when I was 20 years old, I had a $31,000 boat. Um, I bought a Tahoe. I bought a white car. I went on like major, major, major shopping sprees oh and uh, sold the boat. Bought another one because, hey, I'm Lund's pro staff because, hey, I'm doing tournament fishing. You're getting media, buddy. You're at shows. So here's your 20% off. So let's go buy another one. So I sold the other one, bought another one. So from 21, 22 years old, I already owned three boats. I've owned uh, two trucks. Oh, okay. So a truck, a Tahoe, Chevy Cavalier. Oh my and gosh. I was paying payments on majority of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I've had loans in my name since I've been 16. Wow. Um, so yeah, no. So with that, obviously, you get 
free money and not having a financial backing, you know, just doing dumb shit. Mm -hmm. Like you're buying whiskey, you're buying rounds with everyone. So here I literally got, I don't want to use the term free money guys. It, student loans is not free money. Don't do what I did. So I would start buying Canadian Miss big bottles and going through a half a bottle of that a night at college. And obviously with that, you're having sex, you're having, you know, your porn or whatever it is. So like we had neighbor, I hope my buddy's wife ain't listening to this, but she goes to him on the bus. You never know. You never know who's going we're, to. We're going to, we're going to keep him out of it. But his roommate bought a medium size white bed spread and bought a projector and here are the group of kids next to us. And he wasn't part of it. I don't remember. We'll just keep him out of it. Cause he's a good guy now, but, um, bought a projector ended up going buying all the cheap alcohol you could. So you came in with like four freaking basket loads of alcohol and they hit the porn aisle. And, oh, uh, wow. here we're at college with the windows wide open. They're just jamming a projector with porn playing all over the place. And this is in the dorms. Oh my God. Um, many, 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 many nights I would, burn through half a bottle that if not a bottle of the canadian mask mm. get so damn drunk you climb up to your bed and you feel like you're in the ocean oh i feel like right now there there's so much so much more like to to talk about and there's just so much more. i like i'm like diving i'm i feel like i'm watching like a a, a documentary a live documentary right now about yeah. you and like um it's almost like where where should we where should we like start part two? Where <laughs> where should we start part two? Like this, and we're just in your college years, and we didn't even like really dive into your college years yet. And this is in like your twenties. Like I wanna, I want the listeners to know like what happened after your college years. I'm 21 years old at this moment, guys, <laughs> legally to drink. And I remember blatantly because I, I did not work one spring break. We are going into our 20s here, guys. So we're going to kind of tear off some of the shit here. So um, I remember blatantly one year, my last year in the dorms was my first year. Whatever it was, I got my big student loan check that I shouldn't have done with. But um, I bought 18 bottles of whiskey in 14 weeks. In one week, we killed five full bottles of whiskey. And yes, I literally woke up every damn day with wow. a side ache. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, it's under, it's so crazy to know, like, I feel like this is where almost like our paths right here. I mean, I went like at a different age, but, um, you know, same thing. I did the whole, st besides the fact that I forged, I didn't do the whole forging of whatever, but the student loan check thing. The, you know, like I, I, I wasn't, I was the oldest person in the house of grad students. You'd think I'd be the responsible one. Nope. Well, that's not even, I, I actually left out a story of me forging a million dollar check when I was six years old, actually no, eight years old, <laughs> grab my parents' checkbook and they still have it to this day. And I wish I could just frame that thing when I make it. Um, I wrote myself a check at eight years old for a million dollars and went to the local gas station and they declined to check <laughs> cash it, which we, we got. Um, but during that time frame, I was actually <laughs> stealing money from my parents in the drawer, going buying trading cards. And then I ripped open all my stepdad's trading cards and sold them at school. And I also took all the twenties in the drawer and bought trading cards at the gas station and distributed them through all my friend network. So there's a, and then a year or two later, I stole the key out of uh, the front loader in elementary school. So wow. there's a, I, there's a few moments in my life that I, there's still involved. Wow. Okay. You know what? I feel like that's how you learn. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why I'm a little calmer now. Um, <laughs> that's why you learn. Yeah. So, okay. But like so, now, now back to that 20s stuff. So like. So what did you learn? 
What have you learned in your younger years, in your 20s? What have you learned from back, you know, back then that you are, you know, what was that main lesson that you, I mean, there's a lot more we're going to dive into, but like from that time, those are, those are very critical times, you know, like your teenage years. Yeah. I think I was craving attention. What's that? To be honest. I think I was craving attention because I was lacking it for my own father. Yeah. And then when my stepfather came about that, his love language is way different. Like, okay, so we're going to go. To, so there's a five love language books, guys. Right. Mm-hmm. If you're in a mm-hmm. relationship. I don't mind. Go read it. I mind. <laughs> Mine's kind of different because I'm like a chameleon because I'm just so used to blending in and kind of adjusting in, in it. But um, I think I was craving so much attention. So like in class, I would be that the loud one in the corner. I would go scream in bathrooms, you know, mm-hmm. go in the girl's bathroom, start screaming, you know. Um, I think I was craving that attention because I knew my dad was banning me. Yes, yes. And what I didn't know at the time was, you know, stepdad had, now my grandparents on his side passed both of them. So like the past is creeping out. Like the, I'm starting to hear stories from the past. And, and even with my, my grandpa, like now he passed grandma starting to open up stuff. So like my parents were very secure in like the walls were down, not down. They were up and you never knew what happened in the past. So yeah. like you're chasing all that stuff. And even though, yeah, my stepdad loved us and raised us like his own. If your long love language is off, you're not going to connect with that person. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're good now. We're still battling, but I, my sister and I were the ones that took the blunt of everything because his kids went to his parents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, we were the only ones that knew him for 30 plus years. So like we would get the bad side, we would get the drunk side. We'd get the side of him going to the bars till two in the morning. You know, we'll get, we would get the whiskey bottles hidden in the basement or currently whiskey bottles hidden in the vehicle. I'm sorry. You didn't hear that. Um, yeah, we'll just chuckle at that one. Um, so we would get all that. So like my sister and I would just shell up. Mm-hmm. So like when we were like, she was completely opposite. She she's very reserved. So she just goes into her room and, and does her own thing. But um, for me, getting that attention, trying to be in front of the class, trying to get that focus, I think was because I was lacking for my step, my real father. But yet there were certain things in my stepfather that was met. Uh, right. Right. Listen, so obviously, you know, I, I tend to drift to very strong women because growing up, that was more my secure zone. Yeah. So like, I know my mom was there. I know my, you know, friends, moms were there, um, mm-hmm. you know, family, friends, moms, whatever. Like I can go through a list of freaking 25 people that influenced me. I like that. I call my mother. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but truly that's why I have a love for strong women because even though they were there, the women were more like key in my life versus yeah. like the the male figures. So wow. that's awesome. Cause you know, yeah. I love, I love strong women as well. And uh, toot, um, toot. <laughs> toot, toot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just feel like there's so much, um, you know, like once you found your support system and we can get into that in like part two, you know, like yeah. once you found your support system. That's, that is when like, do you feel like once you found that strong women support system, do you feel like that's when a little bit of a shift began in yourself? Because now um, you were getting this, you were getting the support and people were telling you, Chad, quit, quit being a dumbass, you know, get your head out of your like kind of thing. Oh, uh, my, my mom would say that all the time, but I didn't really get the uplifting stuff until like l- legit get it. So like, listen, and I'm going to use the term, listen, like it was in there. People were saying that they were seeing stuff, but I wasn't listening. So I didn't really give two shits. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I didn't really lock on to that stuff until 32 years old, 33. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're, you're constantly fighting, trying to be someone different. Yeah. Um, so like, I, we'll just kind of keep going with my twenties here, but like, obviously at college, I met my Mm ex-wife and now you saw some sort of a picture of her. Um, you're like, Holy shit. Who the fuck was that dude? That was me. Um, I was five, nine, 205 pounds when I graduated, uh, which is not currently where I'm at now. And so like that same dad treatment, 
I would go to her parents' house and obviously being an outrageous, cocky little son of a bitch, um, her dad was very reserved and didn't say any words. Well, I came in with the love mm-hmm. of agriculture and the country love of agriculture is more of the, we grew up with nothing. We love it. We live, bleed it, sweat it, whatever it is. And we don't care if we make a lot of money at it, you know, right. like they do, but there's two tiers. There's the business owner tiers. And then there's the family tiers. If they're in the family tier. That's what they say as a business owner and family, they business first family second. It's just, it's different philosophy, but so I went into heavy business side of it because I, I got very blessed jumping in with the clean slate, seeing a lot of different growers with a summer job I had. And so I graduated. We went down to his location the first time I met him. Uh, me and him actually butt heads right away uh-huh. because at that time, 2006, 7, 2008, 2008. Um, at that time, we were in the middle of the first or second corn rush. So like corn went from like $2 to $6 back down to two, like the spike. And I watched him lose his family a hundred, I think it was 90 or a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Because of him uneducated, we'll just use that term, but like didn't take advantage of the opportunity when it came. Mm. And it just compl- like, I watched him. Like me, I just fucking lost it when mm-hmm. I found out about it because I, I, I literally, okay. I still have that moment in my head. Actually. I remember sitting at the exact table looking at him. And at that time I was on Adderall, which completely don't do it. If you have a kid and don't mix on it. Cause I did both. And I don't remember two years of college literally with that. Um, I would get so drunk and add weed in and add painkillers in for getting my wisdom teeth out. And like, oh, wow. I, yeah. It's like compounded, I, like so compounded with like, all- in one semester, I was on six different doses. I was also had my wisdom teeth out. So I didn't know at the time I had a Vicodin issue. Um, so yes, yeah, so I was on Vicodin. Um, I was on 36. So with that Vicodin, I would throw it up cause I didn't, no, it was a family issue, but I would be in this moment. I do remember it was 3,600 milligrams ibuprofen. Uh. It was Adderall, which is about 20 or 30 milligrams on top of adding all the alcohol I can on top of adding an occasional stop at the hockey house and have weed. Uh. Um, with that, I had a brand new doctor, so he didn't know the understanding of it. So like I would get in and be like, oh, what do you want? All right, cool. Bump it up. Here you go. So like one semester, I blatantly, blatantly do not remember the semester. I went up to the teacher. I'm like, dude, I do not remember what you had on. He's like, what? I'm like, I do not remember. I'm like, I'm going to fail this test because I do not remember. Mm. So like there's moments in my mind, I guarantee I fried my damn brain. Um, but because of those moments, like I would go in and I would have kind of that fighter attitude. So like we're sitting with my at the time, you know, future father-in-law. And he looked at me, he's like, city people don't know shit, blah, 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 blah. Just kind of tearing me to shreds because I was the outsider looking in. Mm-hmm. And um, I looked at him straight out. I said, well, you better figure out how to fucking do it because you just lost your $100,000 for your family and you're poor. So figure it out. <laughs> and I'm 21 years old at the time. Mm-hmm. And, and business was always, like my uncle ran a business, my uh there's some friends and stuff that ran businesses so like i always wanted to be a business owner since i've been day one nice so you know 13 years old making you know cards to a local you know lawn mowing business whatever go to the neighbors hand the cards out uh also making fishing lures selling them at the local store making fishing lures or fishing hook stuff selling them through like my stepdad's network Mm -hmm. um so like i was already to me, I was more comfortable work and making stuff and selling it in high school than I was work working. Nice. Um, but so I rolled into this relationship thinking I was a Mr. Hotshot and there, the hatred I had for him at the time kind of rolled into the relationship, mm-hmm. but he didn't know I was carrying all that baggage. So like 
to me, I'm very old school when it comes to, if you're going to do something, do it right and do it correctly. Don't half-ass it, show up, give it your all and try to do the best you can. Mind you, I'm not perfect. So there's days I feel like shit and I don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just like you. So you kind of, eh, you know, through it, but like the the more, if I'm passionate about something, I want someone to go all in on it at the time. And I didn't know it now until now, but like go all in and do it correctly right. and give your life possible. So like I'm watching him growing up pretty much on welfare with their family farm and my ex-wife at the time not having nothing in life. So she's busting her butt and dad sitting on the couch being a lazy ass. We'll just use that term. Mm-hmm. And so for like first five years until we got engaged or married, like that's all I saw. So like, I was just hammering on him. So like my ex-wife would, we would go down there and she'd just be like, dude, why you're so hard on my, you know, my parents, my parents hate you. Well, yeah. it is what it is. But, um, but like that rolled into, obviously I, I came into a marriage still with drinking issues. I toned down when I was living on my own with her. Mm-hmm. It was more beer related. Like I always had that little attitude where they, they say, Hey, we want to see rad Chad from college, which means the party party Chad. So like my ex brother-in-law would graduate high school and I would just get shit faced, jump on, jump on the four wheeler, just go blowing around on the farm or have like me and her brother, which was party animal, like locked. So like we would take an old couch and take a ski rope, hook it to the four wheeler and just freaking go do redneck shit around the farm. Oh yeah. Um, so like I was the rebel. So like all the boys looked at me as a rebel because I would go against the parents. So like the, her parents would say something, I would purposely do the opposite, just to piss them off. So, so, like I was... so let's, let's stop there because I know there's, there's so much more we are going to dive into, yep. um, but let's stop there because this is almost like a teaser to part two. Yeah. You know, part two coming part soon. Two. Um, but, um, before we, and this recording right now, let's do some plugs. Let's do some plugs. 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 All right, plugs. record. Plugs. We're on recording one, y'all. Um, <laughs> Chad's back for recording number two, and I just actually spilled coffee on me. Uh, coffee? Did you say coffee? coffee? We will. Oh, what uh, a perfect leeway. All right. You for all you, let's just word it this way. For all you coffee lovers, you want a good, funny joke? jokey atmosphere coffee shop atmosphere and yes i did just intertwine those sentences if it did make sense um go visit let's talk java on youtube uh ideally maybe they might be podcast audio forms but that's coming soon where we sit there we grab a cup of coffee review the local coffee shops um take coffee out of their ordinary so like get out of the big box store shit um sorry yes i said that um Take all the local businesses, support them, uh, show what's good, what's bad, give them a sweet coffee review and bring that coffee shop vibe. So like we're bringing all the fun, laughter, all the giggling, you know, Chad might get thrown on the bus a few times. Um, (laughs) This is the show when both of us, like where we're at now, we're at a serious level. This is the show where you could tell we just shut ourselves off on the serious and we just have fun doing it. That's right. That's right. Because we love our coffee and, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. There's something about coffee that like brings people together, I guess. I don't know, but okay. So let's plug your show. Not quite yet. Oh. I will say this. What? Let's talk Java this summer. We're going to say it this way, guys. There will be some live Let's Talk Javas. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. There might be a special one in June, hint, hint. I know. It's okay. And it may be in Oshkosh. So, guys, pay attention to theventureproject.com. Or venture, oh, no, no, no. Let's reword this. The Venture Project Oshkosh. So, theventureprojectoshkosh.com. Hint, hint. There might be a Let's Talk Java coming with some very live cameras at the coffee bar. So, there's one of them. There's one. Um, the other plugs here, guys. All right. So if you yeah, want like, to experience my normal yeah. self as a host, <laughs> and I'm just overriding her because damn it, I'm a host. <laughs> go He's visit. A podcast extraordinaire. Yes. I got multiple labels. Which hat you want to put on? <laughs> um, 
So we have uh, at Instagram, we have at C's get degrees. Um, that is actually my podcast. Uh, that is on all the networks, uh, Spotify, iHeart, Amazon music, uh, iTunes, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, the other one is the other one is, Oh, uh, the other Instagram. Why am I so bad at this? It's Sunday morning. <laughs> The other Instagram is the Chad M Smith. Uh, that is tied into my website, which is www.thechadmsmith.com. Also, yeah, we just hustle. So we got tons of shit. So much stuff going on. www. Oh, let's back that up. It's for all you swag lovers. All right. <laughs> Brand new hoodie. We're audio. We might yes. go live. So Depends. let's, okay. I'll just, it's a, it's a black black hoodie that's not like a thick hoodie it's like a like one of these long sleeve t-shirts kind of hey do you got the side by side screen on oh shoot let's see Mm -mm. there all right i'm gonna drop the mic here this is where we edit it out yes (laughs) oops all right move your mic a little bit more yes there you go yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do. Oh, I got camera up, camera up. Look at this glorious hairdo I got going here. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me see if I can do this real quick. There you go. I just took a print screen. Screenshot. All right, Mike is on. Okay, so Mike is on. Go visit for all this sweet ass swag that we got going, and we're both rocking two black hoodies right now. <laughs> Um, that one is not part of her stuff and <laughs> this is part of my stuff. So down the road, she's going to have a strong and mighty black hoodie, just yes. like how she's doing it. It's coming. Which are actually the old versions are now 50% off. Yes, they are until March for a strong 50. If you go on to, it's on lardymulvey.com. If you go to scroll down to the shop, it's there. Um, All right. So, Hey, I'm, let me plug. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> my turn. My turn. Okay. So the uh, Strong and Mighty podcast, um, it's coming out March 15. Um, first episode. God willing, Chad doesn't chew my head off because I have to ask him for everything, uh, everything <laughs> to help me with this stuff. But March 15 is the goal for when um, uh, the Strong and Mighty podcast comes out. And my gear is again on LarnieMulvey.com. My book, Standing in Strength, so my first plug, yeah, Standing in Strength comes out, um, pre-order link is going to be live on Monday, the first, holy crap, and then um, on the 13th is going to be um, the official launch date, so I'll make sure to put all um, this information on the, Chad's going to help me put all the descriptions on this podcast. Because I'm going to be setting up as like, how do I do this? But yeah, he's rubbing his face right now. Like, oh God. No, I'm used to it. <laughs> so let, let's, before we get to further plug, we have to say it this way because that's just how my life is. So yeah, I was supposed to be a teacher. <laughs> I drank myself out of the program. <laughs> and and I me being his student. Yeah. And now I'm teaching again. So we're good. It's full circle. Yeah, see, it's all full circle, full circle. But anyway, all right. Let's end this. Let's wrap this part one with Chad Smith and um, C's Get Degrees, Strong and Mighty Podcast. Thank you for hopping on our um, collab collaboration together. Um, I really hope that uh, you guys get some inspiration, some empowerment, and you know, understanding that you're not alone in your journey. We're here along with you. We want to bring greatness to you. So. Come back for the next one, part two. And with, uh, with Chad. With Chad. And <laughs> we'll talk about Chad's next section of life. And um, we will see you all soon. So have a great day, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.